Welcome back dear students. So let's start with the today's genetic topic which is a heterochromatin and euchromatin. Let's start with the introduction. So in year 1928, ML heads coined the term heterochromatin and euchromatin. In the metaphase chromosome which are treated with the trypsin enzyme is partially digested in the chromosome as you can see in this diagram and stained with the gymsa stain and chromatin is divided into two parts. So first part is euchromatin and second one is heterochromatin. As you can see in this diagram, euchromatin is a very less incorporated gymsa stain and these reasons appear as a light band. This is GC rich content reason in chromatin. While the other heterochromatin which tend to be a rich with a AT rich or adenine thymine rich relatively gene poor appear as a dark band. Around 90% of the total human genome is a euchromatin. And heterochromatin is a commonly found at the centromere. So in chromosome, you can see the centromere region where the kinetophores are formed at the mitosis and meiosis for controlling chromosome movement in the cell, in the cytoplasm. So transcriptionally inactive, these are transcriptionally inactive and heterochromatins are mainly divided into two parts. First is facultative heterochromatin and second one is constitutive heterochromatin. So what is facultative? As name suggests, these genes which get silenced throughout the process of histone methylation or siRNA or small interference RNA through the RNA interference are called as a facultative heterochromatin as they specifically inactivated and it can revert back the euchromatin phase. So best example of this facultative heterochromatin are mammalian bar bodies which can uh, which I will explain in next slides. So what is constitutive heterochromatin as name suggests continuously present in the chromosome. So that means it is the type of heterochromatin which is always or continuously in condensed form. It remain in the condensed state in the all cells at the all time. So it is always transcriptionally inactive as heterochromatins are transcriptionally inactive. So example of this kind of heterochromatins are centromere and telomere region of the chromosome. So as you can see in this diagram, this is open chromatin and structurally when it's a coil, this is heterochromatin which bind this nuclear histone pool. But in regulatory reason, you can see this is transcycling factor and this is nuclear histone protein H1 pool which bind with these reasons and facultative, these are facultative heterochromatin. And the function of heterochromatins are protect DNA from endonuclease damage. It is due to compact nature of this chromosome, chromatin. It also prevents the DNA region to get access to protein during the gene expression. Satellite DNA are found in the region of heterochromatins. So what is euchromatin? The part of chromatin chromosome which is rich in gene concentration and loosely packed from chromatin is called Euchromatin. So euchromatin covers maximum part of genome as 90% of human genome. House coping genes are one of the form of euchromatin. So euchromatin actively participate in transcription while the heterochromatins are transcriptionally inactive. And the gene regulation mechanism is the process transforming euchromatin to heterochromatin or heterochromatin to euchromatin. So and after heterochromatin and euchromatin there is a chromosome having bending pattern as this structure so human chromosome bending pattern these are all autosomes 22 chromosomes one uh, one set from parent dna means from father and one uh, set from mother dna maternal dna and x and y are allo uh, sex determination chromosome so what is bending pattern and why it's important in genetic as certain standing technique cause the chromosome had the appears of a series of staining like a chemical or dyes which uses uh, in G band is known as gymsa that's why it's not named G banding and the band are lower in GC content than the interband and genes are concentrated in the G C rich interband mainly interband. 
so well, there are several different type of stain we, which we can use for chromosome bending there are several types of chromosome bending here we list a few common types of uh, chromosome bending pattern uh, sorry uh, like types of cytogenic bending are listed below as I start with the G bending which is used called gym size stand as I described in previous slide and give you a series of light and dark strip along with the length of chromosome so Q bending used as a stain called quinquenin Q bending is yield a fluorescence proton it is similar in pattern of G bending but glows yellow color C bending only strains the centromere region of chromosome and centromeres are little constricted portion of chromosome that's where the sister chromatins or two copies of C chromosome will attach to each other when the cell getting ready to divide and R bending as name suggests reverse to gym size staining it is completely opposite to C bending R bending is staining non-centromeric region T bending which mainly um, stain the telomeric region. So G, G bending is very useful because pattern of strips in strips chromosome are unique enough that you should able to can confidently identify each chromosome. So why it is very important uh, Jimsa stain is mixture of a stain called methylene blue and one called azure which form the type of a stain called as eosin compound. And, uh, main is you would typically stain chromosome during the early part of the cell cycle like in the prophase or metaphase stage because the chromosome are partially but fully condensed form so with the help of this we can study the karyotyping or genetic disorder in human disease it is very useful for genetic disorder studies in chromosome uh, in genetics so these are cytological banding patterns Thank you dear students.